can you be as big as Drake as an independent artist? La Russell has an opinion. I, you know, we're going to talk. He was going it. label meanings, and I used to ask him, do you think it's possible to be as big as Drake as an indie? And we used to get a lot of doubt and, and like, ah, I don't know, you'd have to go through this, this, through, through this system. And it's like, if I got here independently, I can only get bigger. You know, I know what I did to get here. So if I do it times 10, that means I'm going to get a 10 times multiple in my growth. If I do that times 100, I'm going to get a 100 times multiple. So, yeah, I definitely believe so. I mean, I'm here mm -hmm. and I'm completely independent. You feel mm -hmm. me? On this platform, most of the people who come on here have a label behind them. It's mm -hmm. part of their PR rollout, the press, but we don't have a label behind it. I got some thoughts on this. And I don't think you can be as big as Drake independent in today's climate, in today's climate. But that's also because we see independent differently, mm -hmm. right? Partnerships, et cetera, independent of a major label and be pretty damn big. I think that's only going to grow. You're going to be able to get bigger and bigger independent of a traditional major label, right? Cool. But if we're talking about the nuances of the relationships and things that have to be in place, the type of partnerships that ultimately are going to have to be in place you're still going to need to to move in a very, very similar fashion. You'll just own a lot more than a Drake does of his own vertical. You might have that team of, again, content, your own distribution or something somehow, whatever that might look like. But I don't think you can be that big. I'll get into some of the nuances why in a second, but I want to hear what you think before I go deeper. I think somebody will be eventually i don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon because see, that's a today's climate that's what i said yeah all right yeah because like we're just now starting to see the effects of people what rest start preaching the independent thing with like 2017 maybe 18 yeah right there yeah right so we're now starting to see the offspring of the people who were listening to him and paying attention right all those kids and younger artists that care enough to pay attention to rest. They're all, you know, now adults, you know, now further along in their careers. And we're starting to see a lot of them move and take this the type of stuff. Seriously. We're gonna make rest the line in the stand? B R and A R? Uh, I think so. Like who who else could it be? Who else could it be? I don't know. I don't have a specific line. I just I, I just don't think he was the beginning of the independent conversation. Well, that's I, all. I think like mainstream for a lot of music artists because one hundred percent. Yeah. He was a he was the first one to like make it tangible right like i'm gonna show you tune core statements i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna talk about this and i'm gonna he, show you he is the example of this generation for sure and he he's he set the tone in a different way yeah on a, yeah. On a whole other level and he made a point of making that so I, i'm not taking that for, from him yeah. i just wanted to see what your thoughts were you know gotta gotta throw something oh, yeah, no, i get it man no, look <laughs> look man look i, I give it to russ on that man because he, he made that i think there were people who talked about it but it always sounded like really like corporate really stuffy like it was different like like i said watching like russ on like an instagram live stream like oh yeah i'll show you how my tone course statement mm -hmm. we just did it, it like it made it feel more tangible right so now we're getting people who are in the era where they grew up on that and we're starting to see a lot more artists care about that put that into practice now the thing that i think makes it hard for indie artists to compete with major label artists is usually two things it's typically Let's just say resources, manly mm -hmm. capital, but let's just keep it at resources. Mm -hmm. And then infrastructure, bro. Like mm -hmm. infrastructure in a way that's like different, right? So like Russell brought the point, like, hey, I'm on Breakfast Club. Our platform is typically, you know what I'm saying, used by major artists. And I'm here without any type of major backing. Like we've known you can get on these platforms if you if you are connected to the right people, right? If I go hire the same publicist that I don't know. J. Cole is using, it's possible that I could get on some of the same publications that J. Cole is getting on because at least this person has access to that, right? Well, I think that's how I typically look at it. What might not be considered is one, the the way of the relationship from the other side, right? So if I'm a major label and I'm the Breakfast Club, I'm probably tapping the Breakfast Club is probably tapping in with the major labels, seeing who's up there, they should come they, they should come by the same way labels are gonna be continuing to tap into breakfast club to make sure hey shit is hot so when we're ready to send people your way you good you fuck with us right when you're an individual and you're not tied to a major corporation you don't usually get that same level of treatment from the part your partners yep unless you were like massive you know what i'm saying you like a, like you tell us with like tell us with 
Spotify and all these different platforms probably reach out to her. You know what I'm saying? Every quarter. Like, you got some shit coming up we need to be thinking about? I would think they'd do that. But if you like someone that's even, not even just small, just say like three, four steps below her like that, you you might not be getting those same types of like reach outs all the time, right? Right. Um, so I think that becomes the part that makes it hard for artists to get to that level. It's not that you can do it. It's staying top of mind and then maintaining that level of infrastructure where you're keeping up with all these different partners and things that you need to pretty much your machine, right? Like your machines, you have to keep activating. Keeping up with that for a long period of time is taxing, it's exhausting, and it's expensive. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you. And it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply, it's completely free, but the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. The problem is not just can people have access to my music today? All right. Can I go direct to consumer on whatever part of my vertical, the, the music, the touring, the merch, whatever. It's because of the relationships at hand that makes music such a partnership heavy industry. Mm -hmm. And that's when we get into the blurred line between independent or just independent of a major label. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think it has to at least be acknowledged when we have these conversations, the economics of relationships, right? The way that, for people to naturally move and their incentives to put people in the room that they're connected to, put people in a room that they can trust. Why can they trust them? Cause they might be connected to them and their incentives are in line. They have a similar agenda, right? Um, where they've been brought in through somebody else that you trust. Right? So though, once we talk about at scale, not make more money than Drake, I believe the wrestle, if that's his ambition and he has the way to do it, he can make more money than Drake ultimately. Right. And not even necessarily just do music. Cool. Are we talking about bigger and being a superstar in the same traditional sense of superstar? That's a whole nother story. Right. And look, by all means go that route. Cause I'm not even somebody who desires that type of, you know, energy and like facial recognition. So it's a little different, but, but I, but if that's what you're going for in terms of superstar, be as big as Drake in that way, I think it's, you have to acknowledge not just big, not in, at home. All right. Not just big at, you know, domestically. So in your city, not big in the nation. We're talking about big around the world, facial wise, not just more money. We're talking about facial branding, right? Considered a big artist. And then how do you get into all the spaces that allow for that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Like, oh, and how do you continue to do the R and D that's required to continue to stay on top over time as an individual entity that doesn't have a lot of those same partnerships. Cause that's extremely difficult. All the R and D that we get from running our agency. Right. But then also maximizing that to all these other streams like touring R and D, right. Let's just say NFT R and D, um, whatever, you know, there's so many different categories. It's hard to truly master all those things alone. So, I don't want to be like discouraging or, or hating against the, the idea of an indie artist being big. I just think when we talk about specifically the facial recognition, traditional superstar box that we think of at the moment, 
as we both agree at the time, it's hard for me to see that occurring without some partnerships that would make me personally say, ah, you're not indie, indie. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that that's the way I think about it. Yeah, I mean, and you no, know, that goes back to kind of what I was saying earlier. Like, why I don't I think it'll happen? I just don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon because we are we are now in the era where we're watching artists attempt to do it. Yeah. Right? So that means we're watching in real time. You know what I'm saying? Not even just rush. Like we're watching major label artists leave their label and attempt to go indie, right? We're watching yeah. artists pop on platforms like TikTok and YouTube and things and choosing to stay the indie route to build themselves out. So like we're watching in real time artists try to figure it out. Going back to what I was saying earlier, it's not enough of them to talk enough about infrastructure. Because you mentioned something, right? Like even even thinking about like the level of superstar, right? Like you have your local practices, you have your regional practices, you have your national practices. You have, you're like I don't think there's enough artists yet talking about what that entire pipeline looks like. You control that pipeline looks like because there's not enough of them that understand it yet. You know what I'm saying? Like these artists that we're watching in real time are going to be the ones that in maybe four to seven years from now, like we've watched enough of them go through it. They've talked about it enough to the same degree that the rest do. And now artists coming at that time maybe has a serious chance of competing, making that happen, right? But I just think right. like we're we're in the guinea pig era of indie artists, and like there's a lot that comes with being the first person to figure that path out for other people. Exactly. I think this era will run into problems to say, ah, oh, that's why I didn't get there because I didn't have this, but then be able to teach it to the next generation for sure. They're going to do it, right? They'll, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe they'll do it. But I still, just because of the scale and the amount of humans involved, yeah, right, it's hard to do it independently, right? I think a better way of positioning it to me is I think there will be a day where you can be massive without losing your freedom in the way that you would lose it before. Right. Like you have more control of your business. You can do shorter term deals. You'll have a lot of leverage without ha being tied up yeah. and without having to do it the old school way, which was I'm going to go through the system and then buy my way out of it and be free that way. Cause there are people who have done that? Yeah. They're big and they're quote unquote free, right? Um, have ownership of all their stuff. I think technically Michael might have did did that in some ways, but then again, this is where we get into the other part of the game, right? You get that big, you're that much of an entity, and you're not tied to any other entities. Do people even want you around like that? That's a different game. Not being a big company. Multiple people, multiple stakeholders that are keeping it all involved. Partners, right? Being a single individual who has all of that power or an invisibility within an industry that's built different. Hey man, now you got into some, some deep conspiracy. You know, I'm just. I know you're right. I'm you know saying. what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, I ain't, I'm just saying. I ain't disagreeing. I'm saying, you know, that's where that's where it gets uh, the other side of the music. Right. <laughs> right. I, I, look, and I'm not, and I'm not even trying to. Like tiptoe way over on that side of the pond, the dark side of the pond, even just strictly business and competition and not even, you know, yeah, getting into the darker stuff is like, well, people are going to make it hard. I don't think people realize how much there is a overall industry incentive to keep things how they are as much as possible. Right. Like I'm a major label. You're a major label. There's another major label and we're all competing. But then. When we see, oh snap, there's something coming to disrupt us. We're gonna try to figure out. Yeah, that is true. Like how to that make is. this shit work. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Band together. A band like, together a little bit. It's just like I can't remember which label, but I'm sure the 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 majors felt screwed over a little bit by the first major who did the fix deal with TikTok. Oh yeah. Because they were all holding out. <laughs> Everybody wanted, you know, hey, I want to get paid per stream essentially. Right, <laughs> and one did the big lump storm, and that set the tone. Once you got that precedent, the other ones kind of got to fall in line, right? So it all affects them how the industry is moving, how artist deals are set up, all of that stuff. But right now, what do they do? They figured out a way to have these distribution companies, so we're still connected, yeah. and y'all can feel independent. Yeah, you get more freedom, but I, st I still got a leash 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Still got a leash. Oh, I invested in Spotify. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get as much as TikTok as I can, but TikTok got that. They they that's a different animal right now. Oh, I'm invested in what well, Spotify has uh the C D baby. Yeah. Oh yeah, you indie, but Spotify I got C D baby and major labels in Spotify. I can't remember if the majors are still completely in Spotify. I know that they had the sales sell off a little bit or something like that at one point. But like things <sighs> Look, man, the people at, in a certain space and that are benefiting from the industry being a certain way, they're not going to let it all go out. Like we talked about when Drake was up for a new contract and Drake could have left being completely independent and the domino effect that, that would have had. Yeah. Like the, it was incentive for me as a label. Drake signed to you. Hey, bro, how much you need? You need 10 mil to make sure Drake stays deal to add on top. I'm like, don't be cheap, bro. Come on, go ahead and make that. That's what I would be like, right? Yeah. Just to keep the climate, the climate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think we also underestimate that as a whole. It's like so it, the, the industry, old money always wants to keep the old environment. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And then new money tries to fight for it and then when new money finally figures it out they become old money and want to keep the old environment <laughs> you, know, you know what i'm saying so it's it's an interesting paradox that we're in but what i see in major labels history they've been very good at buying time to figure out a new program all right it's like we use these rights to slow people down so shit can't innovate too fast. We can throw copyrights and we can sue you. We can take all your mu all music off your platform or not let you get music in the first place. So it buys just enough time for us to figure out, oh yeah, we want to be distributors and we want to you know, get, invest in this company and this company and this tech. So you still in business with us anyway. All right, so I don't know what that new thing is, but the new thing that they're really trying to be, they're thinking less about independent artists individually and more about that AI music shit. Oh, how can we make sure that doesn't leave us? Yeah. You know, so I don't know. It's a it's an interesting argument about can you be as big as Drake? I think we generally agree that it's not. It ain't a with that five years thing. Yeah. Let's say that. Yeah, let's I mean, say that. I'm talking. You no, know, we looking at our new young superstars is like between 22 and 26 right now. So it's around when they hit their thirties. We'll start saying it. But one of them, I think. I don't know who. What type of genre do you think he'll be? Probably pop or rap. Yeah. Maybe not. I think I think pop. You think pop? Yeah. Pop, pop. or Latin. Might be rapper. Mm, Latin. Might be Latin. Oh man, I'm glad you said that because the one person we didn't talk about was Bad Bunny.